The numbers are staggering. Last year, there are almost 1,300 shootings in Portland. That works out to be three and a half shootings a day. It's a huge issue, and it's not going away. So to get our arms around it, we're tackling this one question at a time. Including this, Portland has seen a record number of homicides. So are these cases being solved? Few people have as much invested in that question as Jesse Arambidi. Her son Adam was murdered last year. Police have made no arrests. I wake up in the morning hoping, am I going to see some results today? Am I going to have the detective call me and say, hey, we have a suspect in custody. But no, I turn on the news and what do I see? The next homicide shooting or two or three that happened that night. Of the 90 homicides in Portland last year, less than half have been solved. 36-year-old Adam Aaron Beatty and his friend Billy Peters were shot and killed outside the Acropolis in southeast Portland during the late night hours of February 27, 2021. Investigators believe there are witnesses that haven't come forward. I don't want to die not knowing what happened to my son. We haven't even had a memorial service for him because there's no closure yet for my family. I mean, it's been almost a year and we are just not ready to say goodbye to him. Because you don't know who's responsible. Right. And I, I truly believe that who's responsible, this is probably not their first rodeo, or it definitely was not their last. It's not everybody in Portland that carries a gun that's going out shooting people anonymously. It's pretty much the same small group of people who are instigating it. I think that's an important point because by solving one case, you may ultimately be preventing another. Right, which is why I am so dedicated to trying to reach out to the public to provide tips because it's not going to bring my son Adam back, but it certainly might stop another family from having to go through the same grief and horror that we've had to go through. Nationwide, the solve rate for murder was about 54% in 2020. That's the most recent data available from the FBI. Portland's solve rate that same year was 47%. We are working an uphill battle, and uh, it's frustrating for us as detectives because we want to solve these cases. We know that when someone commits a murder, they've committed a heinous act, and if we don't catch them, they have the, they have the possibility of continuing on. Portland homicide detective Ryan Foote says investigators are overwhelmed. The Bureau added more detectives to the homicide unit, growing from 10 to 18, but they're still struggling to keep up. How do you prioritize these cases with so many on your desk? It's something that we struggle with. We don't, um, we want the time to solve our cases. And that's the frustrating part as a homicide detective in this city right now. We, we know that we can solve more cases than we do. And we have this abundance of work. I think every homicide detective in this detail is working at night after their normal day. They're going home and they're working from home. On the weekends, they're working through the weekends. Um, and people aren't giving up, but the cases just keep coming. And they're difficult cases, mostly shootings. Often, witnesses scatter or they're fearful of sharing information with police. And research shows it's just harder to solve murders committed with a gun. That's because they're often connected to other crimes, like, for instance, a robbery, where the suspect and the victim, they don't know each other versus, say, a stabbing with a knife, which may involve an argument between two people that do know each other. And there's physical evidence left at the scene. As proof, last year in Portland, only about 32% of fatal shootings were solved, compared to a 65% solve rate for homicides without a firearm. But no matter the circumstances, Jesse Arambidi believes the critical factor in solving murders comes from the community. People have to speak up. Yeah, this is Adam and his brother. I just don't know how to reach those people. They're humans, they have a heart, they have a conscience. So then what is stopping them? What is stopping them from reaching out and doing the right thing by, you know, helping a family like mine or trying to prevent another family from going through this? And one other thing. Detectives say there's a reason they can't provide a lot of information to the victim's families. It's not that they're ignoring them, they just don't want to screw up the case. It's one thing to make an arrest, but these cases, 
they've got to hold up in court and get a conviction. And that can take years. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News.